Are you also confused about which DMAT account to open to start investing in Indian equities? Don't worry, I got your back. Welcome NRIs. I'm your host Karunya and today we'll cover what is a DMAT account. What are resident and NRI DMAT accounts? The difference between resident and NRI DMAT accounts. By the end of this video, you will be able to decide which DMAT account is best for you. Imagine carrying around a bulky wallet filled with cash. It's inconvenient, right? Now picture a digital wallet, a secure, convenient way to manage your money seamlessly. Let's relate this to stocks. In the past, owning shares meant dealing with physical certificates similar to carrying around bundles of cash. These physical share certificates represent your ownership in a company. However, just like physical currency, it becomes inconvenient to carry around and trade these paper certificates. This is where the DMAT account, also known as a dematerialized account, comes into the picture. It's like a digital locker for your stocks. Now, instead of physically handling your uh, share certificates, you can trade them electronically. It makes buying and selling stocks as easy as clicking a button. Are you wondering what type of shares it can store? Well, DMAT accounts aren't limited to just stocks. They can store bonds, ETFs, mutual funds and other securities. Shares are held as electronic entries in the DMAT account, which is similar to a bank account for shares. Instead of holding cash, the DMAT account stores shares in custody. Two principal depositories, National Securities Depository or NSDL and Central Depository Services Limited or CDSL maintain DMAT accounts in India. However, it's important to note that these accounts are managed not by the depository but by depository participants. Now don't get confused. The depository holds and maintains securities in an electronic form. Depository participants or DPs are intermediaries offering DMAT account services to investors. In the Indian context, your broker or a bank can serve as a DP. To open a DMAT account with either NSDL or CDSL, individuals need to approach a DP. According to SEBI regulations, both the residents and NRI must have a DMAT account to participate in stock market trading. Now that we have understood the concept of a DMAT account, let's get into the specifics. For your convenience, I'll break the DMAT account into three parts. First is DMAT account number. Your DMAT account number is like your account's fingerprint. That includes customer ID and DP ID. For CDSL, it's a straightforward 16-digit number like 4456-3282139081. For NSDL, it's a 16-digit mix of letters and numbers starting with IN, such as IN5673282292 and so on. Second, DP ID. It's an 8-digit number assigned by depositories. This ID is used to identify the DP in the DMAT account number. That could would be your bank or a broking firm by the NSDL and CDSL. How do you identify DPID? Well, as seen in the image, DPID is the first eight digits of your DMAT number and customer ID is the last eight digits. Be careful when it comes to NSDL as the first eight digits will also include the letters IN. Lastly, POA number. Now, this is part of the power of attorney agreement. It's not as intimidating as it sounds. It simply means you have given your stockbroker the green light to operate your account based on your instructions. Once everything is set up, up, you'll receive a unique login ID and password. If you want to know how to open a DMAT and trading account, you can check out this video. Now, can NRIs open a DMAT account in India? And can residents maintain their DMAT accounts if they become NRIs? Various DMAT account types cater to specific investor needs. Residents typically use regular DMAT accounts, while NRIs can opt for either repatriable or non-repatriable DMAT accounts based on their preferences. Let's understand this better in our next segment, Types of DMAT accounts. For residents in India, DMAT accounts can be categorized as either a resident or basic services DMAT account or a BSDA account. For NRIs, DMAT accounts are further classified into repatriable or NRE DMAT accounts and non-repatriable or NRO DMAT accounts. Let's first begin with the resident DMAT account options. The regular DMAT account is like the classic choice for people living here in India with an Indian citizenship. Whether you pick NSDL or CDSL, it's your ticket to hold and trade all sorts of financial instruments, whether it's stocks, bonds, mutual funds or government securities. Just a heads up, there's a little yearly maintenance charge here. The amount might vary across service providers though. Now here's an interesting option. SEBI introduced the Basic Services DMAT account or BSDA. Now BSDA is like a regular DMAT account but friendlier on the wallet. There are no maintenance charges as long as your total holdings stay at 50,000 rupees or less. Plus, if your investments ever cross 2 lakh rupees, it's seamlessly transferred 
transforms into a regular DMAT account. You might wonder, what happens to my DMAT account if I change my residency? Well, after a change in residency, your DMAT account shifts to an NRO account complying with the FEMA regulations. To align with this change, banks mandate closing the resident DMAT account and initiating a new NRO DMAT account or a non-resident external or NRE DMAT account under the Portfolio Investment Scheme or PIS. The second category of DMAT account is the NRI DMAT account. The first type under this category is NRO or non-repatriable DMAT account. In an NRO DMAT account, transfer of funds is restricted to your home country and converting your instruments to foreign currency is not allowed. Linked with an NRO savings bank account, it manages the income earned by NRIs in India. When it comes to transactions, NRIs who are using NRO DMAT account encounter certain restrictions. While they can't freely transfer proceeds from selling their securities, there is a degree of flexibility. They can transfer the principal amount and interest earned after the TDS deduction. The RBI facilitates remission of up to $1 million annually once the requisite taxes are settled. The second NRI DMAT account type is NRE DMAT account or repatriable DMAT account. Now, this DMAT account enables you to transfer all the proceeds from the sale of security and profits to your residence country. I know it was a lot of information. This table will help you revise what all we just talked about. You can pause the video to go through it. Once you're done, we will move on to the next topic, which is the difference between NRI and resident DMAT accounts. The main difference between a resident DMAT account and an NRI DMAT account lies in the residency of the account holder. As the name suggests, a regular DMAT account suits residents in India and an NRI DMAT account is specifically designed for non-resident Indians. The account types bring us to the second difference. For residents, there are regular and BSDA DMAT accounts. Regular ones cater to all investor types, whereas BSDA is for smaller investors with capped holdings and reduced charges. As for the NRI DMAT account, it has two types, NRE or non-resident external, which is repatriable, and NRO or non-resident ordinary, which is non-repatriable. Moving on to the third difference. A resident DMAT account links to a resident savings account, while an NRI DMAT account links either to an NRI account for repatriable transactions or to an NRO account for non-repatriable ones. The fourth difference involves how these accounts operate. Similar to regular savings accounts, but for stocks, Shares are credited when bought and debited when sold. This is why you have to ensure your DMAT account is connected to trading and saving accounts for seamless transactions. Now the fifth difference. When selling shares in a resident DMAT account, the money is credited to the linked bank account. For NRI DMAT accounts, repatriable proceeds can go to your NRE or your NRO accounts, while non-patriable proceeds are credited solely to NRO accounts. Moving on to the sixth difference, let's talk about joint holding. For a resident DMAT account, residents have the option to hold a joint DMAT account. NRIs can also open a joint DMAT account. Both account holders must complete their KYC registration and submit the required documents. Lastly, taxes, the topic we all worry about. For resident DMAT accounts, residents follow Indian tax laws, including capital gains tax. For NRI DMAT accounts, NRIs follow tax laws in India and in their resident country, with double taxation agreements possibly offering some relief. Both NRO and NRE DMAT accounts follow similar tax rules for investment income. However, NRE accounts provide tax exemption on interest income if the individual qualifies as a person resident outside India under exchange control laws. I know, I know this is a lot of information. So let's do a quick recap. DMAT accounts act as repositories for shares allowing buying and selling through trading accounts. And be it a resident or an NRI, SEBI mandates DMAT accounts for both residents as well as NRIs in stock market trading. As for which DMAT account should you choose, there are various types of DMAT accounts such as resident, PSDA and NRI DMAT accounts, each tailored for specific purposes based on residency. Well, that's it for the video guys. If you have any more questions, drop them in the comment section and before you you go, please note that this video is for educational purposes only. Any information mentioned in this video is not an endorsement or an investment advice. If you found this video helpful, do not forget to hit like and subscribe to Grow NRI. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.